Hello, my people. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> Jenny here. Gaby. And we are super excited to talk to you all today about some really sweet and touching news that we read about regarding the show Gentleman Jack. Uh-oh, is the cat going to get in? I don't know. Over, <laughs> over my shoulder. Oh, this shoulder. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> um, so we both are fans of the show Gentleman Jack. Yeah. We really like it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really cool to know that it's a true story, too. Yes. It's pretty inspiring. It is. And this article that we're going to share with you all today is called When Gentleman Jack First Landed on Screens... Oh, wait, is this the title? No. No, sure isn't. <laughs> it's called Gentlemen Jack Fans Share Inspiring, Meaningful Ways and Lister Story Has oh, Changed Their it. Lives. You want to go close it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, and um, this is by Nola Ojomu. Actually, this is posted on April 10th, so yeah, just a few days ago. Yeah. Here we go. All right. So you can start. When Gentleman Jack first landed on screens in 2019, viewers were instantly drawn in by the incredible true story of Anne Lista, who is known as the first modern lesbian. Mm. Born on the 3rd of April, 1791, Lister famously wrote secret diaries, which were later decoded about her lesbian relationships, traveling the world, and her upper-class life at Shibden Hall. Mm. After her story was brought to life by a celebrated TV writer and producer Sally Wainwright, fans across the world couldn't get enough of... Sur- I'm gonna botch the hell out of this. You can say it. <laughs> Where? Right here. I'm guessing it's Saran Jones and uh, Lister Power walking around Halifax, Yorkshire, and setting her own rules. And that was something that was really fun for us to watch. Oh, gosh, yeah. She's, like, such a badass. She's just, like, intimidating men left and right and doing her thing. And when people tell her she can't, she just kind of does it anyway, finds her own way. And she has an interesting take when it first comes to the ladies, as we know. Yeah. (laughs) The way she treats them. Yeah, she does. I was like... Yeah, and actually, what we liked too, off the bat, was even the opening. Oh like, yeah, seeing her dressing like she wears a stay, mm-hmm. but she like you know, she dresses like a woman. Yeah, but like in her own like gentlemanly way. Yeah, it's really cool. She has a little hat. Yeah, and she has a cane. That's true. Yeah, yep. that's pretty cool. Yeah. As a BBC viewers watched her impressive determination to live her life without conforming to societal expectations. Many were inspired to look inward and make changes so they could do the same. Yeah, and I definitely feel like, for me, um, and we plan to at some point share about coming out, about our, like, personal coming out stories, but for me, I definitely did feel like it was a big moment Mm -hmm. of stepping outside of the box, stepping outside of, like, what I thought people wanted me to be Mm -hmm. in order to be myself. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want me to read it? Uh, so, Kate is one of the fans who inspired to make a life-changing decision. After the show aired, having been in a straight relationship for 25 years, the 49-year-old came out as a lesbian. To me, that's, like, honestly, it makes me kind of want to tear up. Yeah, it really does, actually. Yeah. It's a and very it's just, long time. Yeah, it's just, like, thinking about doing something, like, out of probably a sense of duty, uh, hanging in there. Yeah. And feeling like you have to live a life mm-hmm. that's not really authentic or true to who you are for mm-hmm. that long. Um, I can imagine that that was just so brave mm-hmm. of her to take the inspiration from the story. Yeah. And realize I want something else for myself and take the steps to actually make it happen. Mm-hmm. Like to me, and like I think about too when I was working my last job. And I just felt like I couldn't be myself. Like, mm-hmm. I was out at my job. Right. Like, they knew I was married to you. But um, but at the same time, just, like, working as... For me, I was an office manager, and I was all the time, like, just trying to almost pretend that I, like, 
had certain opinions Mm -hmm. um, or just like trying to say the right thing Mm -hmm. instead of like what I wanted to say Mm -hmm. I feel like you know for me like I didn't spend that much time keeping my sexuality secret but I I definitely felt like I couldn't be myself yeah Mm -hmm. there are those things that you just can't be yourself I remember one time I had to go to this job I was just checking out and they said to me hey you can be whatever you want to be outside, but in here you're straight. Where was this? Or you don't have to say the company, but what kind of job? Uh, it was a, it was a, like um, like a restaurant job. Okay, yeah. It was uh, yeah. very shocking because I knew the person that got me in there, and she wasn't. Mm-hmm. And I figured, oh, okay, we should, should be fine because this was before any like, before we had a lot more rights than we do now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was like someone who's part of the community, so I'm like, mm-hmm. okay. And then when I asked her that, and she's like, oh yeah, she's like, you have to. And I was like. I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's one of the interesting things. Like, I feel like a lot of people, um, and we're veering off track, but I think it's important to talk about mm-hmm. that a lot of people complain when big companies around June, which is Pride Month, they're, like, putting rainbows everywhere and being mm-hmm. like, we stand with pride and yeah. stuff like that. And people are like, oh, my gosh, they're just being, like, so showy about this. They're just you know, paying lip service to Mm -hmm. this, but I remember when people working at big companies, um, were told that they had to be, pretend to be straight while working there, and now they don't, at those same companies that are being very outward, especially here, we live in Central Florida, where there are some big travel tourist companies, um, and it, there was a time when those companies would tell people, I know, um, at least one of them, I knew someone who worked for mm-hmm. a local theme park and was told that she couldn't, sh- like, you can be gay, but you can't say that you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, when companies are like, yeah, we stand with pride, and people are like, oh, they're just being showy, I'm like, I would rather that than the alternative. Mm-hmm. Alternative is not fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you have to think, we're younger than this individual Kate yeah. is. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but still, like, I think people coming out now, depending on where you live, it's different. It's a lot more common for people to come out yeah. in this day and age than it was when we were younger. Oh, definitely. In, like, the late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. Um, being out was then was very different than mm-hmm. what it is now. But I still definitely, like, I think so many people just have that experience of yeah. feeling like they can't be themselves. And then, like, seeing someone else do it and being like, wow, that could be me right now. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, where did we leave off? Right here. Okay, this is a quote from her. I always knew that I had feelings for the same sex, but I buried it deep because I knew that there was no way that I could even contemplate anything else. (sighs) She told Pink News. I feel like tears kind of welling up in my eyes Mm -hmm. hearing that. It's really sad. It is really sad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the math teacher explained that she began watching Gentleman Jack shortly after a death of a close family member and was motivated to make a change after the very first episode. That's huge. And I totally think that makes so much sense. Yeah. Especially when someone in your life that you care about mm-hmm. passes. Mm-hmm. It really makes you... It can make you reevaluate Yo, life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like what's important to you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Watching the first episode, I felt that I have to do this, that I have to try. She recalled Ann Lister arrived, oh, she recalled Ann Lister arrived in my life at a time when I really needed her to. The show validated how I was feeling. Holy shit. Okay. Uh, She continued, I was... It, I was probably relating more to Ann Walker, played by Sophie Rundell, with the fear of how it would be received if I came out. Oh, yeah. That's so powerful, because, you know, if we remember what Miss Walker went through. Mm-hmm. Uh, reflecting on the way Ann Lister's story further changed her approach to life, she explained, I speak my mind more now. I don't worry about what people think of me. Hell I'm, yes, yes, girl! Yes, girl, get, get it! it. <laughs> I'm also very open about my sexuality. I spend too much time in the closet to hide the real me now. Gentleman Jack is my comfort blanket that helps me when I need it to. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, my gosh. Mm. 
Any coherent thoughts to share? Ooh. Well, I think it's very inspiring, you know, even if this was not an actual real life person, but just any sort of like media that can make someone feel this strongly yeah. to just be who they are, mm -hmm. you know, and be comfortable with it. Because she says right here that she's completely open about it. Mm -hmm. She's, you know, and spending that much time in the closet, that's amazing how open she's about it because yeah. I imagine that's just like, wow. Yeah. And I think it's also really cool that she says that she's just been more honest in yeah. general. Um, I think that that's really common uh, for a couple reasons. So especially if you feel like you've had to sort of play a role mm -hmm. um, and you've been shoving down your own feelings, mm -hmm. then when you step outside of that role, I, and I think that this is why people joke about like a lot of lesbians being vegetarian and stuff like that. But you start to question everything else. Like, oh, is it moral for me to be eating meat? Right. Is it moral for me to be doing these other things? Right. Like, like I've been just doing these things because I thought it was mm -hmm. the thing to do. Yeah. But now I'm questioning a lot of other things. Yeah. So I think that comes along, like questioning just your life and society and, um, why you say the things you say and do the things you do is very common after coming out. And the other thing that I think uh, has to do with that is people who are trying to play gender roles. Like, let's say that, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you've been there probably, where you're like dating guys and they expect you to be a certain way um, and look a certain way. And then when you are like, hey, I'm actually gonna decide to date women instead, you start to, let go of some of those expectations that have to do more so with your gender role within relationships, right? It's so funny you mentioned that because yeah. when I was growing up, I'm a tomboy, I always have been, but yeah. I decided to grow my hair for whatever reason. <laughs> Bad idea, by the way. <laughs> a lot of my male friends were like really like close and buddy buddy. Mm -hmm. I kid you not, they all try to date me and I'm like, what's different? Oh, your hair's longer. And I'm like, that's so shallow. <laughs> yeah, I remember like this is probably 10, to 12 years ago, I cut my hair really short and I had already been like dating both men and women for a really long time. Uh, I mean, not a long time, but I had already, <laughs> like I had already dated both. But um, when I cut my hair short, I remember I was like out dancing with my friends uh, and someone told one of my friends I was there with, oh, your friend is really pretty, but she looks like a lesbian. And it was a guy. So he's like, oh, she's really pretty, but she looks like a lesbian. And he's like, uh, yeah, she is. Like, I mean, like I said, I did date guys too, but I've always primarily dated women a little more. Um, yeah. yeah, I <laughs> just... in my primary. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, I remember having that experience. Mm -hmm. It's so, f it's such an interesting thing. It's just like, oh, okay, so, yeah. all right. <laughs> I'm sure we also give out a vibe too, like... <laughs> but anyway, that's a story for another time. Yeah. But yeah, like, because there's tons of straight girls who have short hair. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah. yeah. But I don't think, you know, I'm sure sometimes I get people confused, but I think that we also just give out a vibe, like, yeah, I can take yeah. care of a, a lady. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what's next in the article? Uh, let's see here. So you can go right here. Okay. Kate admitted, life has not been all hearts and flowers since she came out but praised her three children for being great support as she shared her truth with family and friends. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. I can only imagine. Oh, Especially, yeah. like, I think that people who have known you for a long time, like, they start to kind of question, um, why didn't you tell me? Or, like, you know, why didn't you feel like you could come out sooner, especially mm -hmm. when you come out later in life? Yeah. I think that there's a lot of people who have come to expect you to act in a certain way, and when you change that up, they're kind of thrown. I think anytime people make a life change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's a story for another time, but I got some for sure. Okay. Oh, here we go. Oh, this is sweet. She is now engaged to a woman who <gasps> loves and supports me and encourages me to become... Be Come the best person that I can be. Oh, I have goosebumps. Oh, you too. go, Kate. Yes. yes. Sharing your hope for the future season of Gentleman Jack, Kate added, I am hopeful that others who have been in my position gain the com comfort from seeing what women can achieve in life, given the termination that Anne had. Yeah. 
Having read parts of the diaries in the book that accompanied the series, Anne was a great narrator of life at that time who everyone can learn from. Like Kate, Cade was also motivated to be their true self after learning more about their gender non-conforming lesbian through the show. After previously identifying as a cis lesbian, Cade came out as a trans man. Oh, wow. that's interesting. That is too. very interesting. Yeah. Reflecting on a key moment in the show that inspired the decision, the 20 year old told Pink News, I remember one scene from early on in the series when Anne was talking about gender and how a bold spirit like hers was trapped in the vessel of her body. She did say that. Mm-hmm. I thought that was very interesting when she said that. We watched yeah. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any thoughts on that? Um, I do, and I think that this is more prevalent in people who are uh, older than us, um, because I think that we grew up in the age of girl power. Yeah. But I remember a family member that's older than me telling me that she she's like very spirited Mm -hmm. and she told me that she wished that she uh, was a boy and wished that she was a man because there were and it wasn't like you know a physical thing but Mm -hmm. it's because they were able to do so much more yeah they had a lot more capabilities so I think that you know when you look at those time periods I I think that I could see how Anne would definitely feel that way yeah absolutely Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah Sally Wainwright isn't trans, but the way she encapsulated the phrase gave me pause. And still, when I think back to it, it really does speak to the trans experience and the tumult we have with... Tumultuous. Tumultuous. The <laughs> tumultuous time we have with our in- interior feelings versus our physical exterior. Yeah. I can see how that would make someone realize that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where are we at? Right here. Right here. Kate continued... I think her commitment to being different and out there, despite what anyone else thought, was amazing. She has played and written so boldly, unapologetically, with enormous courage. Agreed. Oh, hell yeah. She's like a real feisty, strong Yeah, you don't want to mess with her. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely not like her in a lot of ways, but I I think it... (laughs) She's pretty like just incredible to watch yeah yeah she's definitely that would have been so interesting to see like someone of that time period be like her right you know be like damn and when, what's interesting too is that like i like to watch a lot of historic shows yeah uh, historic fiction and things like that and when you watch them you're all the time saying i would be miserable in this time period <laughs> because of the way that women's lives were yes. how they were very controlled by men by marriage um, not able to have property, yeah. had to rely on men for so much. You're all the time saying, like, I would be so miserable in this time yeah. period. So I think it's really important that stories mm-hmm. like Anne's get out there mm-hmm. and people can see that there were these really bold-ass women who found a way. Yeah, absolutely. They found a way. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, for me, I'm like, watch Bridgerton and I'm just like, I like the show, but I could never live in this time period. Yeah. <laughs> As a woman. As a female, I can't do it. Yeah. Uh, So here we go. I think the first part of feeling motivated to question my agenda was actually, was exactly the bravery to stand out that the show celebrates. So the bravery to stand out. Mm -hmm. Though Cade says their trans experience has been a difficult one, in certain ways, they have found continued comfort in the show during hard times. Aww. Aww. I love that. Yeah. Sorry to hear it. It is sad that it to was that. that it's been difficult, yeah. but it's n- nice to have that comfort. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It let me know that there were situations out there that were also prone to waiting, secrets, outside phobia, and internalized phobia. I felt so many parallels to my own existence and and and. Anne and Anne, <laughs> even though I no longer relate to them in a lesbian identified way, they're still very much part of my queerless queerness <laughs> and my life. Oh, love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that like stepping outside of gender norms is something that a lot of people could be inspired by. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. A kid who was able to share their story directly with Jones, Rundle, and Wainwright at their previous event in March. Oh, that's so cool. Mm. Reflected on how the unexpected impact of the series 
had as they added, My life has truly changed because of this show, and no amount of thank yous or gratitude could be shown. All I can really state over and over again is how thankful I am that this show has touched and helped so many, including myself. Oh my god, the feels! Oh, yeah. Oh, wow, that's so awesome that they actually could share this with, you know, the actors in the, in the, show, in the show, Krita. That's something. Mm, yeah. That must be, like, such a thing for you to have, like, this fan that just mm -hmm. loves yourself, but you've also made, like, a huge life change for them. Mm -hmm. Like, just... Yeah, this for sure. Words. As soon as the first season ended, I knew something momentous had happened. It was like I finally started to accept that I could have my own place in the world, even as someone with a complex gender identity to figure out. Oh, love oh, that. Yeah. Kay continued, I remember clearly thinking, if Anne Lister and Anne Walker can can definitely herald normally societal roles, societal roles rather, gender expression, and religion, why- oh, they defy them. Yeah. Why couldn't okay. I do those things as a religious, bisexual trans man in the 21st century? You go. Yeah, you go. And the answer became obvious. I could. And Gentleman Jack showed this to me. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. You're like, if they can, then so can I. Hell yeah. Do it. Hell yeah. Holly is another fan who not only came out after the show, but also found love in a fan group for the series. Love that! Oh my gosh. The 25-year-old American first began to watch the show because she was a fan of Saran Jones. I don't know if that's how you pronounce her name. Sorry, <laughs> y'all. And had no idea who Anne Lister was. Oh my gosh. The show affected me because I really related to both Anne and Anne. I felt sure of myself and confident like Anne. But growing up where I did, I also felt very internally homophobic like Anne, mm. Polly told Pink News. I was not out publicly. I felt as though I might be part of the LGBT plus community, but I had never taken that extra or taken the extra step to say I was. It helped me accept who I was and to finally come out and be myself. Mm. That's so good. Oh, wow. Yeah, That's shout so out to our fellow American, too. Yeah. <laughs> Holly went on to join a Gentleman Jack group started by a friend at which point she began speaking to her british girlfriend danny oh, Ooh, get yeah. it holly <laughs> she, 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 she added <laughs> my girlfriend danny was inspired to accept herself and be confident in herself even though she was already out oh my gosh love that oh, this is great yeah she is from a very religious family and the show helped her to feel like she could be open about herself and her feelings and she wasn't worried about how people thought or the consequences. Boom. That's Love that's it. huge. Yeah. Damn them consequences. I'm gonna do what I want. Yeah. You go, girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you go, girl. <laughs> Praising the series for putting its entire focus on a lesbian relationship, holy gush. I think it's amazing to see a reoccurring lesbian relationship and a lesbian main character on television. I hope that it continues to be that saving grace that a lot of queer folk need. Yes. Oh, wow. There's just so much feelings in this article. Yeah, and it says that it's going to return, but it already has. Yeah, At it's the time returned. of our filming, we have watched the first episode of season two. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, but, wow. I mean, this is amazing. Like, yeah. Gentleman Jack has done so much good mm -hmm. for the community. Yeah, and I love hearing these stories yeah. about entertainment can really impact people's lives and show them what's possible for themselves. Mm -hmm. I, I really, and this focus a lot about the LGBT plus community, however, I really feel like it also could impact women in general. Oh gosh, yeah. Who might be, like, not even in the community, but want to explore other parts of themselves. Yeah. Or, like, live more boldly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They like Aunt Lista. Yeah. You don't know, wait around, just go make it happen. Yeah, or anyone who wants to just defy gender just, roles. Exactly. It's yeah. crazy. It's... Or, like, keep going when people tell you that you can't or give you reasons why you can't. I hate when people do that. Yeah. It's just, like, the more you tell me I can't do something, the more I'm going to do it now. I'm really surprised I didn't cry. Like, I yeah. definitely felt tears I, welling up. Yeah, but we made it through. We made it through. Yeah. It, but we'll definitely link the article if you want to go ahead and check it out as well. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a really good read. And you can also see some cute little uh, screen caps from the show itself. So. Yes. All right, you all. Thanks for going through this with us. And we look forward to connecting with you all again soon. Please subscribe so you can stay in touch with us. And we're sending you all so much love. Until next time. Later.